Hello, it's Sonia here, Nutritional Therapist. Right, we have got the hay fever season coming up. And for those of you who suffer with hay fever, I know it's not a nice time. You've got your typical watery or itchy eyes, runny or blocked nose, sometimes constant sneezing. And for some of us, it actually triggers off our asthma. So I want to share with you some reasons why certain foods can make your symptoms worse along with other foods that you can hopefully include into your diet that may actually improve them. Now foods which contain high level of histamine can intensify your symptoms. So these foods include chocolate, sorry about that if you're a chocolate lover, tomatoes, aubergines and many fermented foods such as vinegar, sauerkraut, also fermented yogurt, miso, soy sauce and canned fish. There are also foods which although they are not high in histamine themselves, they are known as histamine liberators so they trigger your cells to release histamine. So these foods would include strawberries, bananas, pineapple, citrus fruits and also egg whites. Now foods containing wheat, such as your breads, your pastas, your cakes and your pastries, they can be also problematic for people who suffer with grass pollen allergies. So dairy products like milk and cheese, they can stimulate your body to produce more mucus, which then makes your blotched nose or ears worse. And also cheeses, some of the mature cheeses, they contain a higher level of histamine. And then lastly, sugar, that can actually produce more histamine in your body, which then can exacerbate your symptoms. Now, there are certain foods that you can look to increase when you are suffering with hay fever. Now, some foods are antihistamine foods, which means they block or disrupt the histamine receptors, which is what we want them to do to help to reduce your symptoms. So we're looking for foods that are containing the plant chemicals, quercetin, beta carotene, and also foods which are high in vitamin C. So for your quercetin containing foods, you're looking to increase your onions, garlic, goji berries, all of the berry groups, kale, apple, peppers, plums, and red grapes. So for your beta carotene containing foods, you've got a lot of your bolder color foods you need to be looking for. So sweet potatoes, carrots, butternut squash, your red and yellow peppers, apricots, and also your green vegetables. You've got peas, broccoli and also your dark leafy greens of kale for example. So for your vitamin C containing foods you've got your fruits, you've got your blackberries, blueberries, kiwis, mangoes and then also vegetables. You've still got your peppers, your broccoli, your kale, courgettes and cauliflower. Now having local honey may also help. Although the honey contains certain trace elements of pollen, over time by having this then it may help your body become more familiar with the pollen entering your system and therefore help to reduce any inflammatory responses that it makes. Now it's obviously important to stay hydrated anyway so I do always recommend to have between one and a half litres to two litres of water per day but particularly if you've got hay fever this is important to do because it will help to thin out the mucous membranes which will then help to reduce any of the blocked up feelings that you may have. Now there are also teas which you can have to support you in your hay fever symptoms. So green tea is an example. Green tea are just packed full of antioxidants and we need these for a strong immune system. It is also shown that it can block one of the receptors involved in immune responses. Ginger tea is another example. This has been shown to help reduce your allergic reactions by lowering your body's IgE levels and that's the antibody involved in specific immune responses associated with hay fever. Peppermint tea is another option which may be worth trying because peppermint contains menthol which is a natural decongestant to help you with your sinus symptoms. And lastly nettle tea may also be an option for you to help relieve any inflammation that you have in the upper respiratory tract area so it could help to ease any nasal congestion you've got or sneezing or itching. Now hay fever is an inflammatory condition so we need to be looking at certain foods that you can include in your diet to help just calm this inflammatory response down. 
So when I see clients who come to me with different inflammatory conditions, I recommend to them just to include extra anti-inflammatory omega-3 fatty acids. Now you can get these from foods such as salmon, trout and sardines and also flax seeds and walnuts. Coconut oil is also a very good anti-inflammatory oil. So just include that into your baking or also you can just put that into your smoothies. Well, that's it for today. I hope this has helped. Please give those suggestions a try and I hope it does help you during this hay fever season. If you've got any questions, then come back to me and ask or if you'd like to work with me on a one-to-one -one basis to help you in your health or nutrition goals, then please just come back to me and we can get you started. Okay, take care and I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.